Some of you may know that I'm a writer. I've been doing it for almost a decade now. I mean, I write all of my own scripts for these videos, yeah, but I also write short stories. And I've had poetry published in the past. I was looking for a tool to help write, free of distractions. I mean, computers are annoying when you're trying to write. Even if you have the self-control to not impulsively check emails or play a game, you still have random alerts telling you to update your drivers, turn on your firewall, or whatever. These can all rip you right out of the zone you were in. Pen and paper is a fine alternative, but I type faster than I can write with a pen. And having to type out what you just wrote on paper is time-consuming. There's a device called the FreeWrite by Astro House, which you can only type on. No emails, no gaming, no messaging. It's just a word processor. But it's $300 minimum for used ones on eBay. And the reviews say that it's not even good for what it's supposed to be. There's an input lag between what you type and what shows up on the screen. The developers stopped supporting the older models, forcing you to purchase the newer ones. And apparently the battery life is not that great. One review said that they use their free write exclusively as a paperweight now. So through all of the research I did into trying to find a distraction-free writing tool, one device kept popping up as recommendations. The Alpha Smart Neo 2. So I bought one. And this thing is fantastic. It doesn't have a backlit screen like the FreeWrite, nor does it automatically sync what you're writing with Google Docs, but it does what it's supposed to do, and it does it perfectly. You can type on it, and that's it. Which is exactly what I was looking for. You write your story, a draft at least, or most, with zero distraction. It's just you and your writing. You get into a flow, you let everything out. Then, when you're ready, you plug it into your computer via a simple USB. There's no fancy or pricey software, and the Neo sends whatever file you choose over to your computer for editing. It's as simple as that. You stick three AA batteries into this thing, and it will last for months before needing replacements. It's durable, portable, and relatively affordable. I mean, I would bring this thing to places where I would never bring my laptop. <laughs> like, I would I would write on this thing on like a park bench somewhere, whereas I wouldn't do that with my laptop out of fear of it being stolen. This thing is relatively affordable, compared to the FreeWrite's $300 plus price point at least. I got this one for $100 on eBay. And when it arrived, I was so excited. But before banging out a first draft of this story idea I've had bonking around my brain for a while, I decided to see if there was anything already written on the Neo. And being a nearly 30 year old used device, of course there was. Bob ran away. After church and eating with Barbara's cow family, Bob is going to New York with a cow named Barbara. When Bob and Barbara got to New York, they found a shop at the gas station. Sorry, gas station. <laughs> the only disguise that he can have was a spy disguise. The only one that was in his size. Oh, it actually rhymes. Bob bought out a disguise for $6. The disguise was a spy costume. The spy capinin. <laughs> what? <laughs> Fell for it. Fell for it. So now Bob is a spy. And were lots of disguises. <laughs> the spy costume has sunglass. White and black suit on. Now, of course, this was probably just, like, an elementary school student's classwork or homework or something. I mean, these devices were used in schools to teach kids how to type, you know, without having to worry about your students <laughs> not doing their work and just, like, playing Minesweeper or something. Or Space Pinball. You guys remember that? But this little short story that some unknown kid wrote however long ago got me thinking. How many stories are out there? authorless, anonymous, or just plain lost? How many of these Neos or devices like them are just sitting in landfills with Nobel Prize winning novels on them? Reading that little short story got me interested in researching lost literature. Poems, stories, or books that have been lost to the ages, but are verified to having once existed through references in other works of literature. 
The history of these lost stories is actually quite extensive. From lost poems referenced in the Odyssey, to Terry Pratchett's unfinished works being destroyed after his death, his last wish was fulfilled by having a steamroller run over his computer. Fucking wild. These two examples open up a wide array of reasons for writings being lost. Demodocus's poem referenced in the Odyssey was most likely only spoken aloud, just like a lot of poetry from that era was and lost in the same way that languages are lost. It simply stopped being spoken. Whereas Pratchett's unfinished works were deliberately destroyed. Writing or art in general is incredibly fragile. More fragile than I imagined before. Now, granted, being in the computer era, it's very hard to actually lose anything. You can wipe your hard drive clean and still recover bits and pieces of a story if you know what you're doing. Which is perhaps why Terry Pratchett resorted to a steamroller. And with the internet, you have an almost indestructible safe haven for documents. In the modern era, I'd argue that the only real way to lose your writing is to never write it. So I bought a tool to help me write. And that's fine and dandy, but I don't want to give the impression that you need something like this to write. A pen and paper worked for thousands of years before the typewriter was invented. And to new writers, if I may impart some wisdom, writing is not some magical experience where you're constantly in touch with your story. People who just get into writing, and I went through this too, expect it to come easy, or again to be this magical or meditative experience. This overly romanticized view that new writers have is, for the most part, false. Writing is hard work. Nobody writes a masterpiece in one go. It's drafts and editing upon drafts and more editing, and drafts and editing and drafts and editing. It's peer reviewing, harsh criticisms and rejection letters. All of this can have the effect of pushing people away from writing. But keep going, seriously. I think the best piece of advice I've ever received was from my creative writing professor. She told me to allow myself to write trash. It completely broke this illusion I had that everything I write must be perfect. Writing is a skill, and like any other skill, it takes practice to master. So go write trash, get some rejection letters, write again, and then write a masterpiece. Your stories will be lost to the ages if you give up now. Peace out, folks.